Today's March 1st, 2019, and this is episode 59 of Plane Savers. Good morning, everybody. It is now March 1st, and definitely March 1st is coming in like a lion. It is minus 35 degrees Celsius, which is minus 31 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm wearing gloves. That's, even though it looks nice here, you know, it looks kind of beautiful, it's cold. It's bitter, just, oh, it's cold. Yesterday when I was filming the, the Basler, it was about three to four, maybe even six degrees warmer, and my fingers really hurt, like I didn't wear gloves, I know. And uh, my fingers hurt for like 15 minutes after, like a really, really bad, bad pain. But that's what I do for you guys to get the shots. Uh, today I like to start off, let's go from Yellowknife, let's go 2,000 feet above the Netherlands, and let's join a YouTube video in progress. Watch this, guys. A lot of uh, aviation YouTubers uh, might have noticed already that I'm wearing a hat of plane savers. Uh, that's a project of Mikey McBride. He is the general manager of uh, Buffalo Airways. A uh, pretty known uh, dude for, uh, for uh, their episodes of uh, Ice Pilots that aired on uh, Discovery Channel. Uh, one of my uh, personal favorites as well. And uh, Mikey and his crew are uh, restoring a DC-3 at the moment. And uh, by uh, buying this, this head all the way uh, from Canada, I'm uh, uh, supporting their, their cost just a tiny bit. And it's pretty cool. So, uh, Mikey, hi from the cockpit, from the northern part of the Netherlands at 2,000 feet, en route. And uh, keep up the good work. Thanks. I hope you guys liked that video from 4 Fun Flyer on YouTube. Uh, it's amazing, that's his first video. His editing skills are surpassed mine by far. He's using a free editing software, uh, so good. So if you're, if you're a private pilot in the United States or Canada and you wanna see how they do it in Europe, or if you're in Europe and you wanna you know, become a, a general aviation guy or girl and wanna see how it is flying in Europe, check out uh, that YouTube channel. It'd be a very cool resource and I can't wait to see more future episodes. Whew. Okay, so today uh, I'm going to take you in the hangar because I want to tell you it's actually uh, Chuck's birthday. Well, sort of. I'll explain that on the way. Hey, Chuggy. Yeah. Here, come on down. We get closer to the mic. So. Yeah, well, you know, what's your problem? So, everybody, how does somebody uh, age but not have a birthday every year? That's like a riddle. Well, who's aging? I don't know. I guess we're both aging. You're eight. You're getting a little older. <laughs> so Chucky, yeah. yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah, right on. But it's not really your birthday. No, it's not. Because what's your birthday? February 29th. February 29th. So, so Chuck, we could celebrate it like either on the 28th, which is not really right because it's 28th. So March the 1st, yeah, I guess so, eh? So. So when you were a kid, what what day did you pick? When I was a kid, I didn't want to tell anybody because I was embarrassed. <laughs> it bothered me for a long time. So how, how old are you now? You, uh, 14? Yeah, you should be about 14 now. Well, I was born in 1960. 1960. What's the math on that? Well, you're the math genius, so what's the math on that, buddy? 60, 70, 80, 90, 2000, 59? 59. Holy smokes. Hey! 50. You know, no, no, you know what's crazy? What? Today is episode 59. Oh, is it? Yeah. No way. Yeah, what's the chance? I just realized that. You're 59. It's episode 59. That's 59, pretty good. 59, eh? Yeah. And I already drew the title card. I can't even put you on the title card. I guess maybe next time. So. Oh, well, you know, I won't oh. cry about it there, little buddy. Well, happy birthday, yeah, Chuck. Yeah, you do. Or so, me. Thank you. <laughs> how's the seat check coming? Good. Good. Looking really good. Good? You got uh, Zach here from Red Deer? Yeah, I got a bunch of guys down from Red Deer and like that. So it's all yep. going good, eh? It's going good. Well, it should be flying Friday. Friday. Perfect. Now, you got my birthday present? Do I get a case of beer or do I get something or... <laughs> so you guys... When's it going to be done? Let, let yeah. me, let Happy me... birthday, Chuck. <laughs> when's it going to be done? Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. that. That's pretty classy there, Mike. At least you're honest. <laughs> oh, Chuck. Well, let, let, That's us, okay. let us know in the comments what we should get Chuck for his birthday. Yeah. Probably an APU. 
No, not an <laughs> APU, not anything to do with airplanes. Okay? <laughs> cool. You're quite a welcome. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, thanks for the happy birthday. <laughs> you reminded me I'm getting a year old. <laughs> well, not technically. Mathematically, you're not. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Hey, guys, I didn't even realize that. It's episode 59, and it's Chuck's birthday, and he's 59. Very cool. Actually, now I want to send you guys over to Montreal where Benoit has a message for us. You know, we've updated or made planesavers.com, which is an incredible resource to learn more about our D-Day DC-3. But we actually have a list of all the people that flown on FZ-668 during World War II. And uh, Benoit has made a video here. We want to find some of the family members if they're still alive. Uh, so check this video out. And after the video, uh, I'm going to go try to find Rod, and uh, he's doing some repairs on uh, AVO, and we'll go and talk to Rod after this. So, uh, yeah, send you off to Montreal. Hi, Benoit. Bonjour, Benoit from Montreal. Sorry for my French accent. Uh, I need your help. I was able to find the name of all crew who flew on board of Fox Zulu 668 with the squadron uh, 271 during the Second World War, and troops who jumped during the D-Day. They are from UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa. The complete list is on the Plane Saver web page on the Lest We Forget page. URL will be posted below uh, the video. The goal now is to find the family of uh, these people to help to remember them, perhaps to know more about the story. Plane Saver is not only about the saving your craft, this is about keeping memory alive. So if you find something, please write to Plane Saver. Merci beaucoup. I want to thank Benoit uh, for sending me the video. I know he's been working tirelessly to get the word out and he de designed, built that website. It's absolutely amazing. Also, a uh, big thank you to Stella for helping out and all that behind the scenes stuff. Uh, talking about websites, I made a new t-shirt today based on our uh, D-Day bird. Uh, I'm going to throw a picture of it up now, right here, bing! And uh, link's going to be down below. So if you haven't checked out the t-shirts, check them out now. I'm going to run out in the hangar and see if I can find Rod. I tried to catch Rod, but he just snuck out for lunch. It is lunchtime here in the hangar and it is empty. So there's one thing that I haven't done yet in 59 episodes that a lot of people have been asking for and that is a C46 cockpit tour. I got my flashlight here and uh, yeah no one's around so let's jump up in the C46 and I'll give you guys a cockpit tour and uh, as a way to say thank you for uh, the awesome week. The video views this week have, have really gone up according to, uh, better than last week so as a thank you let's go and I'll show you uh, the commando. Okay, folks, here we are. We're in AVO. Got a lot of room for freight. It's got this nice big door here. Okay, guys, you know what? I'm going to take this time here to explain to you guys uh, how we know if something's going to fit in the C46. So uh, the door here, that's five foot five, and it actually gets bigger. Over here is six foot five. And this line right here is eight feet and right here is eight feet. So you got eight foot square pad, five foot five, six foot five. You kind of use that as your guideline. Uh, the biggest thing uh, that we run into loading the C46 is actually these corners right here. As you can see, it's wider right here. So you could fit a wide piece here, but it gets up over here uh, and it doesn't fit in. You know, it takes a lot of experience to, to figure out what goes into a C46 and not. Um, I'm okay, I'm pretty good at it, uh, at guesstimating, um, especially with, with customers and stuff like that, but it really does come down to the captains. Sometimes I'd say 50% of the time when it's crazy stuff, I go to the captains to double make sure. And it's very rare that we can't get something into the C46 because you can always take something off. Uh, you know, crates can be dismantled, uh, tire pressures can be lowered, suspensions can be uh, in, in quads and, and big skidoos and that kind of stuff. You can always like suck down the suspension. There's always tricks to get anything with airplanes. If we were to upgrade, we wouldn't get, you know, necessarily this big of door uh, with an aircraft that hauls, you know, 10 to 12,000 pounds. Unfortunately, it's uh, 
Yeah, aircraft today don't have big cargo doors. So that's really, and that's really what keeps the C46 alive is the door and just the sheer amount of room. You, you will easily run out of uh, weight, then you'll run out of volume with the airplane unless you're hauling chips or mattresses or insulation, uh, which again, this airplane excels at because it can haul more of the weird stuff than a lot of other airplanes. But uh, sadly, it's just us in Everett's in Alaska that are operating C-46s commercially. And uh, yeah, so uh, even though there's a lot of pluses, there is obviously a lot of negatives um, just because modern airplanes are modern. So um, yeah, how long will the C-46 last? Well, it's outlasted the people that designed it. It's outlasted a lot of the pilots that flew it. Uh, you know, just like the DC-3, it keeps on going. And uh, only maybe Nostradamus knows. But uh, that being said, let's head up to the cockpit and uh, I'll show you guys uh, where, where the magic happens. And there we go. The C-46 cockpit. As you can see folks, the C-46 has these big windows, which is really nice for the pilots. They can see a lot. A lot more room than the DC-3 up here, way more room. As you can remember on Ice Pilots, uh, Scott Blue couldn't uh, even actually fly a DC-3, he was too tall. But here on uh, the C-46, lots of room. But most of you guys are aviation guys, you know what everything is here. So I don't want to bore you with that stuff, but uh, we'll bring a pilot up here on one of the episodes and he can show you guys everything uh, that uh, this airplane is. So this is AVO, and actually, actually, uh, I don't know if this, this light works on me here, but the funny thing with AVO is uh, I was searching a website yesterday and uh, I came upon AVO here. So uh, I'll show you that here right now. So this is an article about military aircraft civilians can purchase. And you got an SU-27. Of course, the Starfighter is kind of reason why I was looking at this uh, article. Uh, you got a MiG-21. Uh, you got a Hawker Hunter. Uh, you got an L-39. Uh, of course, a Mustang. Uh, P-40 Warhawk. Uh, B-29. Uh, F-5. Alpha Jet. Uh, you got a T-33. Very cool. A Harrier, which would be awesome. A Skyhawk. MiG-29. Pretty cool. And of course, a DC-3. You can get a DC-3 too. Uh, we got Spitfire. Corsair. Sea Fury. Uh, Phantom. F-4. Uh, that'd be cool. Uh, ME-262. P-38 Lightning. And the Curtis C-46 Commando. Still active in remote locations like the Arctic. Who would have guessed? Uh, this is mostly uh, used during the mid-40s, a whole bunch of stuff. But another unless you can own a piece of U.S. military history, all it will cost you is about $250,000. So hopefully you like that, uh, that little uh, tidbit of AVO being for sale. Uh, honestly, it's probably worth a little bit more than $250,000 U.S. Just because she's got all the necessary upgrades uh, for modern uh, commercial flying. So... Uh, warbirds don't really need a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, when you're flying uh, freight for um, money, you got to have, uh, you know, the modern stuff. So, yeah, there you go. Hopefully you liked the little tour. Let's uh, head back. Okay, here we got Rod here. One of the questions I get quite a bit uh, is these things, Calicos. Calicos? Yeah, what's uh, what's the deal with these uh, Calicos? And, and like when you see an aircraft being restored, why do you see them everywhere? Well, because Calicos are for grumpy people, so you don't have to ask for anybody to f***ing help you. So basically, Calicos, well, like they're all size, so this is like basically a 1 8 Calico, and it'll go into a 1 8 hole, and it holds all the pieces together. So kind of alignment tool. So. Kind of, I guess if you're a welder, this would be spot welding uh, pieced together in sheet metal. Where the rivets go, you can just do the final alignment. And hold all your stuff together to see if it fits. Sounds good. So, like, say, like, night fright and that kind of stuff, where they're doing lots of metal work, yeah. you're going to see a lot of these things. Yes. Basically, they're simple. They're just basically... It's like putting a nut on there, but when you release, 
kind of spreads up and holds the two pieces of metal together, so it's kind of adjustable. Cool. Sounds good. So a lot of people might not know, Rod is actually uh, was an S licensed mechanic or S licensed structures. Supposedly, yeah. Yeah. So Rod's actually certified to do aircraft structures. So with our D-Day bird, uh, there's those minor pieces of stuff. Rod can uh, sign it out and, and do all that stuff. So we got to get him to Montreal. And there you go. So Rod, Friday. You're. Uh, What's Friday? What's the end of the week? Oh, today's Friday. Oh. Friday, I'm just trying to finish up um, anchor nut replacement in a lead counterweight. So um, other than that, I guess I got to go remember to pick up my daughter at school. Sounds good. Okay. Want to say goodbye to everybody? Cheers. <laughs> okay, so Rod's just finishing that up, uh, the tail on AVO. And uh, yeah, it's Friday. And uh, yeah, hopefully everything's going good. So tomorrow, actually, is our Saturday special episode so saturdays if you're new to the channels usually when i do something kind of different and i do have something kind of planned for tomorrow uh and i don't i don't know and nothing's confirmed yet but there's a certain youtuber that's been on our show before he uh, he's been training on some yellow airplanes hint hint uh i'm gonna try to uh bring him on the show via skype and uh, yeah that's kind of a uh, what i'm gonna try to do tomorrow that might all fall apart i might be a completely different episode but that's the best thing about plane savers is we now know really what we're going to be uh, from episode to episode. So hope you liked episode 59, Chuck's birthday. Uh, please uh, leave Chuck a happy birthday in the comments. I know he watches it sometimes. And I hope you guys have a great day wherever in the world. Great weekend wherever in the world you are. And we'll be seeing you very soon. In fact, we'll be seeing you in about 24 hours. So have fun, be safe, and... Uh, yeah, try to enjoy the weekend.